congrats again on your fantastic score. You ended up with a 170, right? Yeah, that's correct. And where would you say you started? Like, what was your starting point? What was your starting diagnostic score if you had one? I started at a 153. Wow, that's quite a score increase. Yeah, for sure. Definitely. Well, thanks so much for doing this this brief call with me. I just kind of wanted to do a debrief with you after after your LSAT journey, just to do a little recap and get a sense of what you think might have led to your score increase, what advice you might have for future test takers, anything along those lines you might be willing to share. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, feel free to ask me any questions. Yeah, sure. Well, what do you say is the biggest thing that had the biggest impact on you in achieving that score increase in the end? Uh, yeah. So let me start from the beginning. So I would say I started heavily investing in this LSAT process um, in March this year. I took my diagnostic in October last year, but wasn't really committed to the process, I would say. Um, I kind of looked through a few kind of test prep books, um, but it was all self-studying. Um, and then I would say March was when I really started committing to the process. And that's when I found um, your test prep company. And um, through that, I registered for, I think it's the Supreme course, which allows me to um, have, you know, these mastermind coaching sessions. And those, I think those were pivotal to the breakthrough that I had in terms of score increase. Um, so I looked through your kind of foundational material and then, you know, your mastermind classes, being able to ask my questions freely in class and having the contribution of not only you, but also um, experienced students, but also students who were also in my stage of prep um, and just giving me advice, giving me kind of little pearls of wisdom that they got along the way um, that really helped me out a lot. Awesome. Fantastic. I'm so glad the mastermind sessions in particular were were useful to you. And I'm really glad that you mentioned that because I feel like it's something I'm not really uh, able to sufficiently communicate the value of. And this is something that has kind mm -hmm. of arisen organically through the participation of students like yourself. And so mm -hmm. I'm hoping you could share a little more about what exactly goes on in those mastermind calls that you found so valuable. During this time, you know, you're know, you free to ask any sort of question that you may have during the time of your prep. And, you know, you would pitch in and give us advice and um, all the other students would kind of pitch in. So one example of, um, I think this was one of my first breakthroughs. So I was struggling with logic games, um, especially when it came to timing. And, you know, I put this question to the class, how do I improve on timing on logic games? I'm always running out of time. And um, one of the students, you know, just said, oh, um, instead of doing the questions by order, do them, do all the, I think she said, do all the local questions first and then go back to the global because then you kind of get um, more information as you go through. Um, and that was really, really helpful to me. So I implemented that strategy and, you know, by the end of, I would say like a week and a half of practicing that strategy, I was able to complete the logic game section on time. Um, as opposed to before where I was taking, you know, anywhere from 40 to 45 minutes. Amazing. Uh, it's a great, it's a great tip. Definitely. I recommend something along those lines as well. And you also met Judy through the course as well, right? Yeah. So we're still, um, you know, we're communicating every day. She's applying this cycle as well. So we've kind of become, you know, like diehard buddies <laughs> um, who just are supporting each other through this process. Um, and I think that's the other really great thing about your community where, everyone's just so caring and they're so open. Um, and so she's, yeah, Judy's one of the friends that I've made throughout this process. And we really, really helped each other out um, throughout both LSAT prep and now also getting into applications. Awesome. What would you say Annie has opened up for you as a result of getting this score increase 153 to 170? What new possibilities do you have in terms of your law school admissions and your, your law school future? Well, I mean, I'm applying mainly to T14 schools. Um, obviously, you know, T14 schools, you know, that shouldn't be the goal of everyone. It depends on what your ultimate career goals are. But I plan to practice um, more internationally just because of my upbringing and my background. Um, so T14 schools, for in my view, would definitely give you kind of more opportunities, especially overseas as well. Um, so, yeah, so I think getting that 170 definitely makes me a lot more secure in terms of applying to those um, T14 schools. Awesome. Fantastic. Well, I'm really excited for your possibilities there. Thank uh, you. Of course. Uh, any other advice you'd have for students studying for the LSAT now? Uh, hmm. I would say one of the tips 
that's, you know, front of mind for me is definitely avoid burnout. Um, that's definitely very, very real. And I exper experienced it myself. Um, I think you read all these things about burnout and, you know, you're aware of it and you don't think it's going to happen to you because, you know, it's just, you're, you're like, okay, I'm taking it easy. You know, it's not going to happen to me. But at the same time, when I experienced it, um, it happened very quickly. So there weren't any kind of warning signs beforehand and it just happened. One day I went from, you know, PTing within 170 to mid 170s to, you know, low 160s. Um, and that's when I kind of found out, okay, like I'm really burnt out. My brain isn't processing information properly as it should be. Um, so that's one of the things I would watch out for, um, just to make sure to pace yourself, give yourself enough time um, another advice I would have is just really to trust the process. Um, I think different score ranges, there's different things that you have to focus on. And um, I think it's easy to plateau in this process. Um, and it's easy to kind of lose trust in yourself and to not believe that, you know, you're capable of achieving the score that you want. But at the same time, I think, um, get advice from people, uh, get advice from people who, you know, are in the same process and different stages of this process and that'll really push you through. Great advice. Thanks so much for this, Annie. And so I'll definitely, yeah, no please keep in touch and let me know if there's any way I can support you at all moving forward through applications. And of course, let me know how it turns out. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for tuning into the show. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already to be notified of new episodes as I release them. And feel free to reach out if you need anything at all as you move forward with your prep. I'm happy to help however I can. In the meantime, I wish you all the best and take care.